glorious Lord. King of kings, Lord of lords, eternal God, everlasting King. We thank you for bringing us here today to hear you speak to us. You've started with us already, preparing us for that great and glorious day. A day that will be a day of joy for many and a day of sorrow for others. We declare today that in the name of the Lord, we will be among the joyful ones in Jesus' name. Amen. None of us shall be left behind. Amen. Speak to us again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. You may have your seats. We are going to be looking at the message titled, Shall We Be Missed? Shall We Be Missed? And uh, the message is a question to you. It's a question for me. It's a question to every one of us. And it's an indication that there is going to be a gathering somewhere. And some will be there and some will not be there. When the people are gathered together. And then you look around. You look around for people you had known. You look around for people you had met in the past. You look around for people you expected that were supposed to be there. And then you cannot find them. How sad will it be for such people on that very day? Husband will look for wife. Wife will look for husband. Parents will look for children. Children will look for parents. The members of the church will look for their pastor. And the pastor will look for the church members. Only to discover some made it, but not all. I pray he will be there. If we are going to be there, then there is need for you and for me to be prepared. And never to take anything for granted. Never to take anything for granted. Understand? The rapture is going to take place according to the word of the Lord. But if the rapture delays, whether we like it or not, death is going to happen. I pray that none of us will die unprepared in Jesus' name. I look at the book of Matthew chapter 24. Shall we be missed? Matthew 24 from verse 36. But of that day, an hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came. And took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken. And the other, tell me, left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken. And the other, left. Watch therefore. For ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But how this, but know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. First Thessalonians. Chapter 4, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, from verses 13 through to 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, concerning them that are already dead, that ye sorrow not, even as all that which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For these we say unto you by the word of the Lord, 
that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. You will be among them. Then we which are alive shall, uh, 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 and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. You will be among them. To meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. First Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 50. Now, this I say, brethren, the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. I need an amen. amen. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruption must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So, when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. You will be victorious in Jesus' name. O oh, dead, where is thy sting? O oh, grief, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, everybody read what follow for me. You will not labor in vain. Amen. You will not serve God in vain. Amen. You will not worship in vain. Amen. You will not pray in vain. Amen. The Lord will keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. We need to understand that the journey of life requires adequate preparation. Every business requires good visibility study as part of the preparation for successful enterprise. Employees do aptitude tests and interviews for their would-be employees before hiring them. Competency is a must for the success of every endeavor in life. Immigrants going from one country to another are not exempted from these requirements. Understand that such immigrants must have their valid passport with them. Not only that, they must have their valid passport, they also must have something that is called visa. And in addition to that, they must have a reasonable, genuine reason for going into that country. And I said that because it's sometimes not enough to have the passport and the visa. In between, in between, if your reason is not genuine or cannot be proven, you know what? There are people that with a passport in their hands, with the visa on their passports, at the very port of entry, they were still returned. They were rejected. I pray that your salvation will not be fake. Your sanctification will not be fake. Whatsoever the spirit controlling you will be the right spirit of the living God in Jesus' name. You know, we are told by somebody who put a song together that heaven is a holy place. Filled with glory and with grace. Sin cannot enter there. All within his gates are pure. From defilement kept secure. Sin 
cannot enter there. If to the world everything looks okay, to the world you look saved, to the world you look sanctified, to the world maybe you're even a minister of the gospel, to the world maybe you're good at charity work, to the world you're a child of God. You look like you have the passport. You look like you have the visa. But your motive, your intention was wrong. At the gate, you'll be turned back. I pray you'll not be turned back in Jesus' name. The songwriter went further to say, You may live in sin below. Heaven's grace you refuse to know. But you cannot enter there. It will stop you at the door. It will buy you out forevermore. Because sin cannot enter heaven. So, understand that if you hope to dwell at last, when your life on earth is past, in that home, so bright and fair, will I find faith on earth? I pray they will find us waiting, find us watching, find us ready in Jesus' name. The Apostle Paul clearly warned us about this time when in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, Looking at it from verse 1, he said, This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers. False accusers, incontinent, fears, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. He went further to say, don't be fooled by the way they look. Don't be deceived by the way they dress. Don't be carried away by the walls of their mouth. He said, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. The Bible says from such people, do what? Turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse laws, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. He say, they come for Bible study. But they are not genuine. They come for revival services. But they are not real. They are always there at the worship service on Sundays. But they are far from God. They call upon the name of the Lord. But God is not their God. He doesn't know them. And the Lord is saying they have the form, the look, the attitude. The deceit of the believer. But they are revenue wolves in sheep's clothing. Once you identify them, run away from them. They may be called workers in the church. They may be called leaders in the church. They may be called sectional leaders. They may even have the title pastor. Let me go a little further. They may be called overseers. If their life is contradictory to the word of God, the Lord is saying, run for your life. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. You know, the challenge we have today is, we look at people because of their position, because of their title, because of their name, because of what they have, because of what they are, where they have been to, because of where they are coming from, and then we look away from all the things that they do. And the Lord is saying, on that very day, there will be disappointment. Disappointment. How I pray, you will not be disappointed. When the saints are going marching in, oh Lord, I want to be in that number. Oh God, I pray, you will be in that number in Jesus' name. 
understand, understand First Peter chapter 4 verses 1 and 2 now. The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter day times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies in hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron. No matter what to tell them they don't pay attention. They think they know better. They dwell and depend upon the testimonies of yesteryear. When in reality, as of this time, a uh, point in time, they are far from the Lord. They are far from the truth. They are deceived. They are derailed. They are distorted. I pray the Lord will help us to be real and honest to the end in Jesus' name. Apostle Peter, on the other hand, did not hide the, uh, the graphic description of the manner of the second coming of Christ when in the second book of Peter, chapter 3, looking at it from the 10th verse through to the 14th verse, uh, he declared, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are dearest shall be bumped up seeing them that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness look looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall met with fervent heat nevertheless somebody say nevertheless we according to his promise look for new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness wherefore beloved saying that ye look for such things be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace Without spot and blameless, the Lord will help us. In Jesus' name, Jesus is coming again. What are the realities? Is it real? Is it true? Well, of course, understand. Thousands of years before Christ was born, there were prophecies about his birth. And eventually, it came to pass. He came. And everything that was said about him all came to pass. The same way and manner prophecies were given concerning the second advent of Christ. And whether we like it or not, Jesus is coming again. The reality of Christ's second coming. First Thessalonians chapter 5. I look at it from verse 2. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, but ye, the redeemed of the Lord, but ye that are washed by the blood, but ye that are saved, but ye that are waiting for the coming of the master, but ye, brethren, are not in darkness. You will not be in darkness in Jesus' name. That that day shall overtake you as a tea. As a tea. When tears come, they come suddenly. When this comes, they come when you least expect it. When this comes, they come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. When this still comes, they care. They come at a time unannounced. And so will the coming of the Lord be. I pray none of us will be caught unprepared in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 29, verses 5 and 6 says, Moreover, the multitude of thy strangers shall be like small doors. And the multitude of the terrible ones shall be as a child that passeth away. Yea, it shall be at an instant, suddenly, suddenly. And then it says, when it happens like that suddenly, and all the multitude will be just like a small sand, and they be like nothing. He went further to say, thou, the sinners, 
the ungodly people, the unrighteous people, the lawless people, the proud people. And then he says, Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder and with earthquake and great noise, with storm of tempest, and the flame of devouring fire is telling us judgment of destruction is coming upon all the godless people in, at the end in Jesus' name. But that will not be your portion. I said that will not be your portion. In the name of Jesus. Malachi, Malachi. Is Jesus coming again? Yes, he's coming. Chapter 3, verse 1. Malachi 3, 1. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. Before me. And the Lord, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to his temple. I need a name him. Even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come. See the Lord of hosts. He will come. He will come again. Matthew chapter 24, verse 43. But note this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the chief comments, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye ready. For in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man coming. So many passages of the scripture telling us and reminding us that is coming, that is coming, we will not be caught unprepared in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 12, verse 39. And this know also, that if the good man of the house had known the same thing, what hour the thief will come, he would have washed and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. You see, different people saying the same thing, telling us that Jesus is coming again, again, again. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10. But of that day, the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. When all those are happening, you will not become a firewood. When the fires are burning, you will not become a gasoline. Second point why is Jesus coming? Reasons. For the second coming of Christ. Jesus is going to come. To fulfill the promise that he made to his disciple. To fulfill prophecy. It was prophesied he was going to be born. He was going to die. He was going to come again. Prophecy must be fulfilled. Promises must be, must be fulfilled. Look at it in John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Looking at it from verse 1. In the fulfillment of his promise, he said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, what's the next thing? I will come again. Jesus is coming again. And receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you will be also. Where is Jesus right now? Where will you be at the end of your life? You will make it there. Jesus is coming to fulfill the hope of the saints. That's second reason. One is to fulfill the promise he made to the saints. Number two is to fulfill the hope of the saints. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 9 Verse 19, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most miserable. Why is Jesus coming? He's coming to separate the sheep from the gold. The sheep from the gold. The righteous from the unrighteous. You know, there was a time while he was here on earth, and then the disciples, they told him that this, the wheat was planted. But then tongues grow in the midst of it, and then the disciples says, let us go and uproot the tongues. Jesus said, no, 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 leave them alone. 
leave them alone. So that while uprooting the towns, you don't end up uprooting the wheat. Some people, they don't understand. That the church is like an hospital. And indeed, it is an hospital. It's a spiritual hospital. Wherein, you have people that are sick, different categories of sicknesses. I pray, no matter what sickness you came in with, you'll be healed. I'm not talking about I have headache sickness right now. I'm not talking about uh, I am blind, I am deaf. I'm talking about spiritual sickness. Spiritual sickness. I pray that all your spiritual sicknesses will be healed in Jesus' name. And you know, just like the regular hospital, some sicknesses take more time than other ones. That is why you don't just come to church and think everybody is okay in the church. No, the church we have here is not in heaven yet. The church is what just been prepared for heaven. For the fact that we say deeper life Bible church does not mean that everybody in deeper life is born again. Don't be fooled. Don't be deceived. The Bible made us so know. You will know them by their fruit. You will know them by their words. You know them by their lies. You know them by their conduct, by their character, by their behavior, by their attitude, by their confession, by their profession, by the things they do and the way they do the things they do. By their fruits, you will know them. Don't just say, well, because we are members of the church together. No, that is not the condition for heaven. And you want to be sure that if you are a member of the church, your life is right with God. You want to be sure that you are a living example for others to follow. You want to be sure that you are a model. You want to be sure that you are not a deceiver. You are not a liar. You are not an adulterer. You are not a fornicator. You are not a thief. You want to be sure that you are not a worldly person. You want to be sure whether you are a child, you are a student, you are an adult, you are a father, you are a mother, that every day of your life that Christ is formed in you, that the beauty of Jesus is seen in in your life, and the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Because one day is coming that the sheep will be separated from the goats. One day is coming that the wheat will be separated from the tongues. That will be on the day of harvest. So, we all are together. You say, these people are in the church. Why don't the, ch don't the church just excommunicate them? Leave them, Jesus said, leave them alone. You know, there are some times that some people that are workers, we even leave them alone. We leave them alone. Because, you know, I was somewhere and they said, look at it. They said because one person was disciplined for doing something wrong, many people were feel like they were all disciplined. You see, the respect of person. And because of that, sometimes you feel... If I do this, it will affect this and affect this. Of course, that's not the right thing. And then the timid pastor will say, well, let us leave them alone. Well, whether we leave them alone or not, when the day of harvest comes, there will be a separation. Matthew chapter 25, from verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory... And all the holy angels with him. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations. All nations. Whether you are white or black. Whether you are old or young. Well, no, well, no matter whether you are illiterate or you are educated. All nations. And he shall separate them one from another. And as a shepherd divided his sheep from the gold. And he shall set the sheep on the right hand. You will be on the right hand. But the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was an hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came in unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, when did we see you hungry? And we fed you. When did we see you thirsty? And gave you drink. When did we see you as a stranger? And took you in. 
or naked, and clothed thee, uh, while saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it, unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Amen. Then shall he say unto them on the left, Depart from me, ye cursed. You will not be cursed. Into everlasting what? I can't hear you. Fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and ye give me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye give me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee hungry, or thirsty, or stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Everybody read what follow. Then shall he answer them, saying what? Verily I say unto you, in as much as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not unto me. And this shall go into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Be ready to meet your God. Be prepared for eternity. It will happen. It will happen. You know, I was somewhere within the week visiting a family. And then I posed a question, are you Mary or Martha? And the husband said, She's Mary and Martha. And I say, you are right. Pay attention here. Or whether she, he said she was Martha, I don't remember. But I said, we need Mary and we need Martha. We must be Mary Martha or Martha Mary. What do I mean? Many of us are Mary. We take in the word of God. But we do not know it. Martha it was demonstrating the practicality of the Christian life. So, as you take in the word, you need to leave that word out. So that you don't be like cancer only taking in and never giving out anything. And this is what Jesus is saying over here. Let your light so shine before men that they may see and glorify your father which is in heaven. Be there for your fellow brother. Be there for your fellow sister. Do you see part of what Jesus is saying is a condition for heaven right here? I was sick. When last did you visit anybody in the church? It's easy for you to grumble and to complain that nobody visited me. When last did you visit somebody and you want to make it to heaven? When last did you provide for the need of other people? If you really want to make it to heaven, and not only that, when last did you help the strangers? When last did you feed the hungry people? You know what people do today? Don't what it is. When I was young in the faith and growing up and maturing, when you see people have needs, you want to meet those needs, but you don't want to go to them directly. So that the glory can be to God. So you go to your leader. And you say to your leader. This gift is for so and so person. But I don't want to go directly. Please help me give to the person. And then the leader will give it. Not mentioning your name. There are other times people will bring the gifts. They will package it. With the person's name on it. When people were not there. They will drop it right at the altar. So that when the church comes. They see the name, they know it is for somebody. I have seen occasions where some people were to support the work of the Lord in my life, and then I will get to my vehicle and I will find an envelope. Somebody stuck, in it, stuck it in there with money there, no name, nothing. But you know what we do this time and age? We want them to know I am the one doing it. So they can bow to me. 
so they can worship me. And that's part of why I said, you may have your passport. You may have your visa. But the motive, the intention is strong. At the gates, you will turn back. So it's not enough to say, I am saved, I am born again. How is your heart? Is your heart right with God? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So Christ will separate the sheep from the goat. Jesus is coming to judge the sins of man and the man of sin. He's coming back to restore sanity to the world that is leading with sin. Isaiah chapter 32, looking at verse 1 there. It says, Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment or in justice. Jesus is coming to reward his faithful servants and to judge the sinners. Jesus is coming. Well, for that you can look at Revelation chapter 22, verses 10 to 12. It says, Behold, I come quickly. I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give to every man according as their work shall be. Look at verse 10. Are you there? He said, verse 10. And he said unto me, See not the sins of the prophecy of this book. For the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly. How soon is he coming? Quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. He said, I am the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end. Why is Jesus coming again? He's coming to eliminate the devil and his demons. Right now, they are in the world. You don't see them, but they are operating. They operate as spirits. They possess people. They pollute people. They perverse people. But a time is coming. Their work will come to an end. And I pray even now, in, the, in your life, the works of the devils and the demons will come to an end in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. I, and I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is called the devil. And Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose a little season again. So, Jesus is coming to eliminate the devil and all his works. When that happens, freedom will be there for people to serve the Lord. Finally, Jesus is coming to eliminate death and to usher in eternity. To eliminate death. Right now, every man born of woman must die. For as long as the rapture has not taken place. But when Jesus comes, Death will be swallowed up in victory. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Revelation chapter 21. Verse 1. And I saw a new heaven. And a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city. New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them. And be their God, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more deaths, neither sorrow, nor crime. Neither shall there be any more pain 
for the former things have passed away. Jesus is coming again. When he comes, he will make all things new. All that you are going through right now will be all over. It will not be long again, brothers and sisters. Let us hold on firm to the profession of our faith. Let us be readily prepared for the coming of the master. What then do we do? Readiness for Christ's second coming. You must be ready. I must be ready. We all together must be ready, must be prepared. And uh, because before we enter heaven, we shall be vetted. We shall be vetted. And you know, at that point in time, brother cannot save you. Sister cannot help you. Your wife, your husband cannot deliver you. Your parents, your children will not be there. Everybody to themselves. I pray that will not be a deal of sorrow for any of us in Jesus' name. Come back to that Matthew chapter 5. Uh, sorry, chapter 25. We read it earlier on about the ten virgin. Jesus told us that they all took the alarm. But five were wise. The other five were foolish. We will not be foolish. We will be better prepared. And then we are going to see some of the things we need to be prepared very shortly. Revelation chapter 3, verse 3. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast, and repent, and repent, and repent. Some people, their repentance now is how long they have been in the church. Their repentance is the services and the work they are doing in the church. They are Repentance is, the, is, is uh, the name they are called in the church. The Lord is saying, repent. Whether you are a pastor or you are a pew member, repent. Renounce your sin. Do your restitution. We don't hear a lot of people doing restitutions this day anymore. It was the norm in those days. People take things for granted. When you close your eyes in death, you will pass through the gate of repentance. Your record will be changed. How your repentance was, you will pass through the gate of restitution. If you restituted all that you need to restitute, I pray you will not be disappointed at that time in Jesus' name. Remember, therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief. And thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Revelation chapter 16, verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garment, lest he walk naked and they see him and they see his shame. Personal preparation and personal checklist are required of the redeemed of the Lord. Sinners must repent of their sins and the righteous must be persistent in holiness and daily examination of their conduct, daily examination of their character, daily examination of their communication. Daily examination of their company, their companionship. Daily examination of their commitment. Daily examination of their consecration. And daily examination, examination of their calling. If you're a believer, don't just say because I was born again. Because I knew the Lord. You must watch on daily basis. Examine yourself. How that Christ Jesus is in you. The Bible says, Know ye not yourselves, except ye be reprobate. Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. Understand why you are opening. We need to understand that many people are good with planning for the future. The good are planning for their children. The good with planning to travel to another country. And not just that they plan, they spend so much money, so much fortune in the planning and the preparation. But unfortunately, we don't plan for eternity. We don't plan for the resting home of our soul. I pray after today, 
we will plan. We will prepare. Matthew 16, 26, for what is, a, what is, a, for what is a man profited? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? The Lord will help us that our souls will not be lost. Matthew 24, verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. Look up here. Many are called. Many are called into the faith. Many are called into the church. Many are called into Christ. But few at the end of the day will be chosen. Because the such light of the Lord will go around. You know, the Bible says that the time will come, that judgment will, become, will, will, will begin from where? The house of the Lord. The house of the Lord. Judgment will begin from the house of the Lord. So the such light of the Lord will come. No matter who you say you are. A pastor, you're a pew member, you're a worker, you're a member. The such light of the Lord will come, and then, even though we all have been called, now the time is going to come for selection. And there is something that is called selection by elimination. You will not be eliminated. So then, you will prepare yourself adequately because. We are going to be examined on the nature of our repentance. The nature of our repentance. The nature of our restitution. The nature of our relationship. When I talk about relationship, I'm talking about our attitude. I'm talking about uh, uh, our aptitude. Attitude and aptitude. Because these are the two things that will determine our altitude. If your altitude is good, but your attitude is bad, your altitude will be nowhere. You can't go far. You can't go far. I can sing, aptitude. I can preach, aptitude. I can do this, I can do that, aptitude. But about your attitude, your life, is what will matter most at the end of the day. See, talking about relationship, how are you in dealing with other people? Do you easily reconcile with others? Or you are one of those that if anything happens, you say, over my dead body. I pray you not be dead before you, real, you real, real, realize you're wrong in Jesus' name. Then, still on that relationship, are you proud or you are humble? Pride shows up in different and diverse ways. And then, the, the, the such light will also come into those of us that are married. Your marriage. How is your marriage relationship? How are you treating one another? The such light will come over there also. Not only that alone, the such light will get to your place of work. How faithful are you? How loyal are you? Are you a worker in the church? Uh, let's move forward. Uh, not only your repentance, restitution, relationship, then your resourcefulness. The such light will come over there also. Resourcefulness. How useful are you in the hands of the Lord? Are you a vessel unto honor? Or are you a vessel unto dishonor? You'll be judged on the basis of that. Whatever God has handed over to you, committed in your, into your hands, how are you using them? You will be judged on the basis of that. About reliance. Are you really, truly, faithfully relying on God, trusting in God, or you are relying on the arm of the flesh? How responsible are you? Responsibility. This is accountability. Whatever you have been given to do, you know the Bible says, it is required in sea world that a man be found what? Faithful. You'll be faithful. Respectability. Respectability. Are you one of them? that have the respect of man at the expense of the word of God. You have the respect of man and then you pervert judgment. You know the truth, but because it is this person. When it is this one, there is this judgment. When it's another person, it's a different judgment. There is one that judges righteously. So, be ready to meet your God. Then, you will judge on remorsefulness. When you were told you did something wrong, 
How did you handle that thing? Did you try to justify it? Did you try to get angry and annoyed because of that? When you were told this is a sin, did you try to argue your way out and argue your way through? And God is watching everything. But we're going to be judged on this renunciation. We judge on renunciation. Have you fully, completely, totally given up sin? Fully, completely renounced the world? Have you renounced worldliness? Or your heart is still in the world while your body is in the church? Your heart is still in the world while your, uh, your heart is still in the world why we think you are a child of God. It's not going to work that way. The Lord will help us not to be free and free indeed in Jesus' name. When I talk about renunciation, have you really renounced worldliness? Worldliness in your language. Worldliness in your eyes. Worldliness in your ears. The things you listen to. The music you listen to. The, 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 the things you watch with your eyes. The pornography out there and all the indecent pictures you watch. Have you completely renounced all those things and then your dressing? Are you still pretending that you are a child of God when in reality you are not? Yes, you have left Egypt like uh, Jacob, but you still have Egyptian garments upon you. No wonder. When the son of a uh, uh, Jethro saw Jacob. Uh, sorry, what's the name now? Moses. When he saw Moses, and he said he saw an Egyptian. When the people out there see you, they call you Egyptian. Because of what you're putting on. Because of the way you are decking yourself. And then you say, well, the other people in that church are doing it. You forgot that God judged the world of Noah and destroyed everybody except the eight soul. Why will you allow anybody's life to be a model and pattern of your life? Why don't you just give up everything? Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. There is a way you come to the church, there is a way you go to work. There is a way you come to the church, there is a way you go to ceremony out there. There is a way you come to church when you get your town meeting or your village. There is a way you present yourself. There is a way you act in the church when it gets your business because the business must continue to move on. You know all the bribery and the corruption and everything that you do. There is a way you live in the church and there is a way you mess up with ladies out there. There is a way you mess up with men out there. Have you renounced everything? Judgment day is coming. It's coming. I pray you will not be missed. So then, repent before it is too late. Don't be a chameleon. Faking it. You'll be judged on the basis of your rebellion. Whether you are a child rebelling against your parents, you are a member of the church rebelling against your leader in the church, you are a worker at work rebelling against your, your boss or your superior, your rebellion, you will be checked on it. And you know, there are times within the family, you are correcting this one, and all the people in the family are, uh, give me the word now, uh, gang up, I need a, another word, conspiring against you. All those conspiracies will judge. You think God is blind. He will judge everything. You're trying to paralyze that person from doing his job, whether as a father or as a mother or as a pastor. You know, it happens in the church. You correct somebody in the church and others are ganging on. Judgment day is coming. I pray you will not be missed. In the name of Jesus. And then you will judge on the basis of resentment. When I use the word resentment, I'm talking about anger. I'm talking about bitterness within. The way a manner you hate other people. 
And then with that kind of restraint, you have your carcass here. I have my carcass here. They, you have this group. They have that group. You know, in the church sometimes, in a church like this, multi-national uh, 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 church. And then this one will say, I, these are people from my country. These are people from my country, and then they have their meetings. They have their group. Or you may say, these are people from my race or my tribe. It doesn't matter what your tribe may be. Without holiness, you will not see God. There should be no division in the house of God. I need an amen. Whether somebody is from your place or not from your place. When you die, yes, they may take your body to wherever you came from. But your soul is going somewhere. If you are both born again, you both end up in heaven together. All through eternity. Eternity, eternity. Where will you spend eternity? If you are sinners together, you end up together in hell. And then you spend eternity in hell. Why don't you forget about your tongue, your language? Why don't you forget about your tribe? The Bible says concerning the, 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 the patriarchs, if they had been mindful of where they came from, they would have returned. You will not go back to Egypt. You will not go back to the world. No one will come to church and say, we are members of the same family. Are you sure? Is that true? Let something happen between you and your family member and then between you and your church member and then we'll see which one you take serious the most. When you have event going on, who are the people you lean towards the most? Are they not your townspeople? Who are you fooling? And then you say, we are all going to heaven together. When we now say, as a member of the church, members of the same family, just like every family will want the best for their family, we say this is the way to go. Don't you rebel? Don't you revolt? Don't you try to instigate other people to follow you and be uh, like Korah, Data, and Abira? The Lord will visit our church. The Lord will point our church. The Lord will prepare us for heaven. In the name of Jesus. If there is any of all this carnality, don't deceive yourself. Don't fool yourself. Judgment day is coming. Death can come at any time. And you know in this church, we have witnessed the death of the old. We have witnessed the death of the young people. It can be my turn. It can be your turn. It's not a matter of how far, but how well. It's not a matter of how long, but how well. Forget about when you join the church. It matters not. If somebody just came yesterday and is real and serious and genuine with God and the person dies, he goes to heaven. Straight to heaven. You've been there. You're a veteran in the church. Everybody knows you. Your name is like an household name. But your name is not in the book of life. The way you reproach other people, judgment will come. Your resistance, confrontation, the way you fight, judgment will come. Repent and return unto the Lord. Luke chapter 50, sorry, Isaiah chapter 55, verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man is taught. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. He will abundantly pardon. Very quickly. Get to the final point. The retribution. On Christ's second coming. It's going to be both ways. It's going to be a payday. Payment. Reward for the righteous. And vengeance on the sinner. I read it to you before, but I'm going to read it again. Revelation chapter 20, verse tw verses 15 to verses 12 to 15. And I saw the dead, small and great. Look up here. Look up here. 
small children die. I saw the day, small and great. Old people die. I saw the dead. White people die. Africans die. Europeans die. Anybody, everybody will die. I saw the dead, small and great. If it be your turn, today or tomorrow, where will you end up? They stand before God, and the books were opened. Pay attention. Everything we do in life are being recorded on a daily basis. The books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. Your name will be there. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. Don't think God doesn't see. There is an angel assigned to each and every one of us. Documenting and recording everything we do on a daily basis. Oh God, help us. That we will not regret at the end of the day in Jesus' name. Verse 14, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever, rich or poor, educated or illiterate, preacher or pure member, and whosoever was not found, written in the book of life, was cast into the lake of fire. Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the doors of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 9. Young people listen, rejoice, O oh young man. And rejoice, young lady, in thy youth. And let thy heart share thee in the days of thy youth. And walk in the ways of thy heart. And in the sight of thy eyes. But know thou, you need to know. That for all these things, God will bring you to judgment. Young people, the, the Lord is having a word for you. Anything you do in your school, while daddy is around, while daddy is not around. Anything you do in the field, anything you do during youth program or young adult program, anything you do in the church premises, Outside of the eyes of other people, anything you do, God will bring you to judgment. The money you stole, the lies you told, the morality you were practicing because you see other people doing it, all the rebellion, all the stubbornness, all the self will. The Bible is saying, God will bring you to judgment. That is why. The Bible says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Understand, if you will repent of your sin and turn away, salvation will be yours in Jesus' name. John chapter 3 verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. But he had but uh, but he had not believed in the name of the only begotten, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hated the light. Neither come to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Repro, Psalm 28, verse 4. Give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them after the work of their hands. Render to them their deserts. Can you see? The Bible calls it what? Deserts. You will not end up with evil deserts. Because they regard not the works of the Lord, nor the oppression of his hand, he shall destroy them and not build them 
all and not build them all. And not build them all. What then do you do? Now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. Let us pray. Talk to God. Talk to God. How can you live here the same way you came? Why must the devil glory over you? I will house of Israel. Search me, O God, and know my heart today. Try me, O God, and know my thoughts, I pray. Spend quality time in prayer. Let's just spend time to pray and commit ourselves to the hands of the Lord. This can be an opportunity to get yourself out of the old and get into the new. That our names will be translated totally into the book of life. If you are there and the Lord has revealed everything to us that this is the day to seek the Lord while it is day. For the night cometh and it will not be too late. I pray by his message today, every one of us will bow before the Lord. Search me, O Lord, and know my heart today. See if there be any wicked way in me. Let's pray unto the Lord. Let's seek the